Hello and welcome to Dining Room Discussion slash Lecture Number 2. Today I'm going to talk about, briefly, Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionhearted. Um, he was a poet, he was extremely religious, and he was really a jerk. Um, first of all, he was born to Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine in 1157, I think in Oxford. And he grew up mostly in Aquitaine. His great ambition was, among other things, to be Duke of Aquitaine. Uh, his mother wanted him to have Aquitaine, and he was her favorite son. Um, when Henry II died in 1189, after the second and final revolt of his sons against his rule, it was said, in fact, that when Richard went to see his father's corpse, that the body bled from the nose, which in the Middle Ages, and if you've been paying attention in Richard III, supposedly indicates that the person who's present when the body starts to bleed is the person who killed the, pers the corpse. Well, Richard did kill Henry, like, legitimately, uh, but the sorts of troubles that they had to deal with as a result certainly contributed to Henry's death. Anyway, Richard became King of England from 1189 to 1199. He hated England. He said if he could sell London, it, he would if he could find a buyer. Apparently buyers were hard to come by. Uh, he only spent six months of his ten-year reign as King of England in England. The rest of the time he was on crusade or he was beating up people in France. Um, his statue is in front of Westminster Abbey because everybody's like, ooh, Richard the Lionhearted, awesome dude. No, not really. He was an awesome statue. makes him look really cool. But in general, he wasn't all that great. Um, he went on the Third Crusade and uh, was there with Philip Augustus, who was King of France at the time, and Frederick Barbarossa, who was an old dude who decided to go swimming on accident in a river on the way to Crusade. He drowned. They never found his body. So, um, and when And along the way, Richard, among other things, besieged Sicily to get his sister Joan out of the clutches of the bad guy in Sicily at the time. He then married a woman named Berengaria of Navarre. In part because the alliance was good for Aquitaine, Navarre was on the southern side of Aquitaine, and Eleanor of Aquitaine wanted to be certain the southern border was protected. So she married Berengaria to Richard, which wouldn't have been so bad, except Richard took her with him to Cyprus, which he also conquered, and then went on crusade and sort of left Berengaria behind. Um, so far as we know, he never saw her again. She has the distinction of being the only Queen of England who, while Queen, never actually set foot on English soil. Richard may have consummated his marriage with Berengaria. He may not. We will never know. They did not have children. He did have an illegitimate son whose name was Philip, I think. Um, and he was reputed to be somebody who would take women by force, raping them, because, you know, it's good to be the king. Um, there are others who think maybe he was homosexual, or at least bisexual. We don't know. He's dead, so meh. Um, while he was on the Third Crusade, as you heard from Max's lecture, he attacked Acre, among other things. Because we can, can, can! Yes, we can, 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 can! Took Acre, sent a note to Saladin saying, Hey, pal, come and give me money or do something else, and uh, you can have Acre back. Saladin did not respond for whatever reason, and Richard didn't have much of a choice. He could leave the city and give it back to the Muslims just by leaving. He could take the Muslim prisoners with him, which meant he'd have to guard them and feed them, which he didn't really have the resources to do, or he could kill them. So 2,800 or so Muslims, they built a, a platform in the middle of Acre, and they chopped their heads off for three days straight while Richard watched. Uh -oh! Um, he also offended people when he was in the Holy Land. I think he was sort of a guy who offended a lot of people, if I'm honest. Uh, Philip Augustus decided to bail and leave Richard to it and left the Holy Land. And Richard had about three months before Philip would get back to France to get himself out of, Fran out of the Holy Land and back to France to protect his possessions in France. 
on the way, one of the guys he offended captured him, and he spent some time in the Dernstein Castle in Austria. A Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! And he was... Uh, in captivity for a year, the cost of the ransom, what did I put here? One quarter of the salary of every English person for a year. It was like 32,000 tons of silver or something like that. Um, I'll double check that that's the number. But it was a massive amount of money. It was raised by his mother. His brother John, who was also less than a nice person, was in charge of England while Richard was gone. John also helped to pay to keep Richard in captivity so John could continue to be in charge of England. When Richard got back, he didn't even thank the English for their massive sacrifice. It pretty much wrecked the economy of England for a while. And he beat up on people in France and tried to get his territories back from Philip Augustus. It was during one of these things, one of these conflicts, where he was wandering around outside a castle he was besieging. He noted somebody on the top of a wall knocking away arrows with a frying pan, which he thought was really amusing, until he got hit in the neck or shoulder over here with a crossbow bolt. Now, you have to remember in those time, in that time period, they didn't understand about germs, they didn't understand about keeping wounds clean, they didn't have access to antibiotics, and because of the nature of where the wound was and the fact that it was treated so badly, he got gangrene, which is where your tissue basically rots while you're still alive in your body. It took him some time to die. I'm sure it wasn't pleasant. Um, and after he died, uh, the young archer person who hit him with the crossbow bolt, Richard on his deathbed, forgave the young man. Um, after Richard died, Richard's retainers went looking for the guy and killed him. Um, Richard's body was buried at font uh, It's not there anymore, as I said in the previous lecture. Um, and his heart was buried in Rouen, and I will be including some pictures of what his heart looks like now. They preserved it. There's an article from 2013 that talks about how they preserved it. Um, Saracens and this kind of stuff, but in general, he was not a nice man and not a good English king. And at some point in here, probably right after this, I will put in a quote from a Victorian historian who talks about what kind of a jerk he was. And that's all I've got on Richard. Next is going to be John. Hope you're doing okay being at home. Bye.